Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure and uh, it's really nice to see you here. Uh, I'm Nikola Bogdanov and uh, let me quickly introduce myself for you. Uh, basically, I've been working for Musawasoft for the last maybe eight years almost. Uh, currently, I'm a team leader and a technical trainer in the company. Uh, normally, you can see me talking uh, for Agile or some Agile methodology or something like that. But yes, this is a Java technical conference. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to present you a web framework that is really uh, good designed and uh, meets all the uh, needs of a modern team. And I'll try to explain to you today why it's so suitable for such Agile teams. Uh, I marked uh, this presentation as uh, intermediate, but uh, basically it's not needed for any one of you to know or to have any experience with tapestry. Uh, the idea is that uh, you should be, it's really suitable for everyone who is aware with uh, uh, Java Enterprise technologies, who has worked with uh, any of the other uh, web frameworks like Spring, Struts, GSF, whatever, or just GSPs and servlets. Uh, basically, the, it's the same area. So today, I'm going to present you the framework. I'll talk a little bit about the history of this framework. Uh, I'll show you some core principles and ideas. Then we will go a bit deeper in uh, some more interesting features behind the scenes that we cannot learn so easy by following some tutorial or something like that, maybe. Uh, at the end, I'm going to show you maybe some uh, short demo to see some uh, real code. Anyway, it's really short and easy one, but I'll try to give you a pretty good impression about uh, tapestry. Uh, so, Apache Tapestry is an open source framework. It's uh, designed uh, for developing, uh, mm, let's say, scalable and uh, robust uh, web applications. Uh, it's, you can think about this as an alternative of Spring, maybe, or GSF. Uh, the framework is uh, built upon the, starter, the standard servlet API. Uh, so, for mm, it works in any uh, servlet container or application server. For the application server, uh, Tapestry application is simply a servlet filter that is servicing uh, the incoming requests. So, really close to the Spring uh, web application, the standard one. Uh, okay. After that, uh, mm, also uh, it's uh, good. Uh, it's remarkable to, to understand that uh, the Spring, uh, the, sorry, the Tapestry application is uh, made by uh, pages, which consists from uh, components, which consists of other components, and so on and so on. So everything is really modular and pluggable. So that's why it's scalable. Uh, so the main uh, objects that uh, you should have in mind for now I'll cover them later in uh, more details, are pages, components, and services. The services basically are uh, the places where we store our uh, business logic. OK, so a little bit history. Uh, Tapestry is created in the year 2000 by uh, Howard Levis Ship. In uh, 2006, it's uh, made part of mm, the Apache Software Foundation as a key project. So we have a huge step uh, in the 5.0 uh, version, which basically introduces uh, all the uh, ideas for no configuration, for uh, modern uh, inversion of control uh, functionality and so on. And now the, currently stable, the current stable version is uh, 5.3.8. And uh, we have also the beta of the 
4, which basically uh, mostly uh, updates the UI uh, design of the framework because it was uh, at, at first created upon the um, prototype GS framework, and now uh, they they give us the ability to switch between prototype and uh, jQuery. Uh, okay, so what are the key ideas, the key principles in Tapestry? Basically, it's really a developer-centric uh, framework. So it's designed for the developers to be able to write clear and fast code and good and working applications. Uh, as I said, it's modular, it's made of components. The main uh, pattern is uh, uh, focus on development, not on configurations. So basically, uh, everything uh, is up to naming conventions and uh, placing uh, your classes, your, folder, your files in the appropriate folder. So there is a strict uh, structure of uh, such application. And, but this uh, is uh, give us the ability to have clean Podju classes. And uh, basically, Tapestry uh, does not uh, force us to extend some specific uh, classes or implement some specific internal interfaces. We just name uh, our pages, our components appropriately, and that's all. Uh, that's why uh, that now the current five and above versions are backward compatibility compatible because uh, basically the framework uh, integrates to your code, not the opposite. That means that when you're using names and uh, annotations, when the next version of Tapestry comes, they could change the uh, implementation of the framework, but it uh, still meets the same uh, annotations and so on. So that's why. Uh, Basically, they were really criticized uh, before that because there wasn't so much backward compat compatibility between the four and the five versions, but now they have solved this, uh, this problem, maybe. Uh, it's really easy to write your code. You just, uh, you see later, just plug, you just write a couple of lines of code and you can combine the components and pages. Uh, they also have a really nice feature. It's called non-stop uh, development feature or live reloading feature. So I'm not sure how, mu how, much, how many of you have thought about this, how, how, mu how much time we lose every time when we have to change something in our backend and have to wait for the server to be restarted or, or republished or something like that. Well, here we just refresh our page and everything is updated. It's really nice. Uh, another thing is that they have clear uh, error and exception messages. Here, for example, you can see that uh, it's pretty obviously that basically we, uh, does not, we don't have this hello property. So they tried to make it really uh, developer-centric. The notable features, as I said, uh, Tapestry scans our file system and sees when we have some changes in uh, our files. So it performs the hot, something like hot deploy for us, and it's not needed uh, to uh, restart the server, for example. It's component-based, it's uh, naming convention and annotation-based. Uh, another key idea is they uh, don't focus so much on storing uh, data in HTTP session, which is a common uh, approach in some of the other uh, frameworks, because they said that when they don't store the, I, I'll tell later where they store the data, but when they don't store it in the HTTP session, they could have a clustered environment, a multi-threaded environment, and they basically implement uh, a real um, object-oriented programming in terms of our pages. I'll show it later. Uh, they also have this uh, post-redirect get pattern. So mm, maybe many of you have seen this problem then after some of uh, our uh, post requests. When we refresh the page, it sends again the post request. So they solve this problem following this pattern. Uh, that's also uh, give us the ability to use all the buttons on the browser like back and uh, forward and so on. 
The inversion of control is something that is really good covered. It's a modern application framework. Uh, it has uh, own uh, service, own uh, layer for uh, inversion of control. And uh, lastly, they have, uh, as, it's, uh, as, as it is in the uh, other modern application frameworks, uh, they have uh, markup language, templates, so everything is, uh, in terms of writing uh, UI uh, stuff, is uh, HTML-based, and it's more clear. How it looks uh, like uh, to write a tapestry application. At first, they have pretty good uh, uh, Maven configuration. You, you could create a simple uh, empty project just using the Maven archetype for tapestry. The project structure, you can see, uh, it's really uh, Maven-like. So it's really close to the Maven project. Uh, everything uh, is uh, spread in uh, different packages. So we have packages for the components, packages for the uh, pages, services, and, and so on. We also have, this on the same level, uh, folders for the template files. So everything is clear. Uh, it's really easy to use Tapestry because basically you just have to use uh, just a couple of uh, dependencies. Tapestry core is uh, the main one, and also there are some additional, but uh, you can really easily uh, understand uh, how, how to use some of the other uh, dependencies. Okay, so let's mm, look a bit a bit closer into the specific components that Tapestry has. So as I said earlier, they have pages. The page is something like a combination between uh, Java class and template file. Uh, the only uh, rule is that they should have the same name and uh, should be placed in the same uh, uh, hierarchy of packages and folders or in the same folder or package. And uh, that's it. So basically, you have uh, back-end and front-end really good uh, coupled. The components, uh, they are pretty much the same, but with smaller sizes. So basically, they again could have uh, a template and uh, Java class, again named with the same name. But here, it's not necessary to have the template. So sometimes we have components that are not, which are not visualized. And maybe there we don't need the template. The services, as I said, are we'll see later uh, in more details. But they're uh, just normal uh, Java classes. Uh, they just have where it's needed to uh, use some of the annotations and so on, but they don't extend everything, anything. Uh, they just have to be placed in the services uh, package, and that's all. Mixins are something very uh, interesting. Basically, the mixins give us uh, the ability to change the behavior of some of our components without changing this component. So, for example, here, using this mixin, uh, we basically just, on some specific place, we use uh, the uh, autocomplete functionality for the uh, input. And in the other places, we just don't use it. We could write our own mixins and implement uh, this different behavior ourselves. And that's it. We also have entities for the ORM uh, objects, and maybe thus these are uh, the most of the main objects here. The only XML configuration that we need is the web XML, and it should contain only three uh, things that are more important. Basically, we should specify the uh, root package and the name of the filter, also the filter mapping. But with the name of the filter, uh, Tapestry recognizes our main module. I'll explain now what the modules are, but basically, with one sentence, uh, the modules are the uh, places when, where the uh, dependency injection is being uh, described. So we should have this main module. We could have more than one. But with the name of uh, the main filter, uh, Tips recognize uh, which one is the main module. So here, 
our main module will be named app module. And that's it. Uh, so, as I said, they have implementation for inversion of control. What is more specific, it's a dependency injection, uh, constructor or field based. They don't have a setter based uh, dependency injection. Uh, the registry is the place where the instances are stored and where they come from when we uh, want to inject some of our services. Uh, in more details, for every uh, service, uh, we have a proxy object in the registry. And when, for the first time, some of the methods of the service is being called, then the registry creates the uh, real instance. And after that, it could be used and injected and everything. As I said, we could have more than one module. We have one which is the uh, main one, but we could have uh, tapestry internal modules, we could have application modules which are, which are uh, created by us, we could have also modules that come from some third-party uh, libraries. And that's it. Uh, as I said, uh, the module is the place where the dependency injection is being described. So we have a couple of methods that are being used in the module class. Basically, binder, builder, contributor, decorator, and uh, the advisor. With the binder, we'll see later, uh, we just bind our services and uh, record them in the, in the register. Uh, with the builder, we could build our own services right there in the uh, module class. We could contribute to some of our services, for example, uh, Tapestry gives us the ability to use, to extend, to scale our services. Uh, when, uh, when we use some, there are three types of specific collections that could be used in some of our services. It could be used directly in the module for contribution. As an example, let's say we have a mm, service that is something like file uh, editor service provider, file editor provider. And we have a specific configura uh, configuration uh, our map, let's say, which maps the different uh, uh, file types with the appropriate uh, editor that we created. And when we want to contribute this, we simply use this configuration uh, map in the module and just add in this map another uh, key value. It means uh, another type of uh, file and another uh, service uh, for um, file editor. And that's all. We just extend and scale our services without changing almost anything. Okay, with the decorator and advisors, and advisors basically we change our services on load. That's, that's the idea. Uh, okay, some more information about the object orientation of our uh, pages. So basically, for every page, uh, we have, as I said, uh, the idea, the feeling that we're using a specific instance of this page. That's why uh, we can use them in real, in real object-oriented uh, model. So let's say we've used uh, service servlets or controllers. We know that we have a single instance for per servlet or per controller, and uh, they are handling all the uh, requests. So basically, we can also easily, for example, uh, store data in this uh, uh, servlet, let's say, because it's shared between different uh, uh, requests and so on. So here, they solve this problem. At first, how they do it? I'll, I'll just uh, uh, repeat again. They, they try not to use the HTTP session. They have their own internal cache memory, which they use for, uh, for storing the page instances. What is more important is that they have uh, an instance per locale, so it supports uh, locales, and how, uh, in terms of how many uh, locales we have and pages, we could know how many instances we have, so how this is made, how we have these uh, 
per thread usage of uh, these instances. Basically, the data of uh, every page is stored in such per thread ma maps. So we have map for every uh, request, so we can store in this map uh, our data and could be shared between requests. Okay, we can store the uh, data per instance, per table, per uh, page. So we feel like we're using uh, the page as an object. Okay? Uh, so the life cycle of a page. Basically, the page is being loaded. That means initialized, all the components uh, are initialized, uh, the dependencies are injected, and so on. After that, uh, the page is activated. When we, uh, after the page is activated, uh, it's uh, being checked the request, if it's coming from the same page or not. And if it's not coming from the same page, it goes to the page reset state. Uh, what is uh, uh, important here is that we have event handlers for all these uh, states. So when the page goes in some of these states, we have the appropriate uh, event listener, so we could use it in the page and to uh, write some specific logic uh, for this moment. When we want to save some data and uh, uh, share it between requests, we basically uh, mark it as persist. And here it's being stored normally in the HTTP session, but not every time because there are also different policies. For example, it could be shared in the URL and so on. But mostly it's, shared in, it's stored in the uh, HTTP session. That's why we should uh, be careful using uh, persist uh, fields because uh, uh, despite the other problems with the multi threading and so on, we could have problems with uh, uh, it's a really common problem with these uh, uh, frameworks that, for example, when we use two tabs in our browser, they share the same uh, session, and we have uh, we could have problems that uh, in in the first tab we change something, on the second one we see uh, the something that is not uh, right, and so on. So we should be careful. There are also some solutions for this uh, problem. They have uh, conversation stuff, but it's something like third party that is added like another tapestry uh, module there, but it's not something normal. So when we use the persist uh, uh, fields, sometimes if we close the, the browser and come again, we could be in the same session because it's not still expired. And to reset these fields, we basically will use this page reset uh, handler to reset these fields. OK, uh, something very interesting is that we have uh, events and events machines, state machines every, almost everywhere in uh, Tapestry. So for example, here on the left side, you can see this is the state machine for the page rendering. So when a page is rendered, it goes through different uh, states, and we have event handlers for coming in every of these states. And so it's uh, really easy to perform some uh, something uh, when the page goes there. Here we have uh, the event uh, sequence when we submit a form. The form component is something that is uh, one of the most important uh, components in Tapestry, I think also in the other frameworks. So we have specific uh, life cycle here, again states, again event handlers, we can do something before the form is submitted, after that, and so on. We have also the form render here, we, should, we can do something before the form is being rendered, and so on. So everything here is uh, really like uh, different state machines. Yeah. Uh, the ORM coverage, basically, Tapestry supports JPA, but uh, it works really well with Hibernate. For now, it supports uh, three, and in 3 and 4. I'm not sure uh, if uh, it's really uh, good supported for, HT for Hibernate 4. I think uh, the latest versions are. Uh, but it's really easy because Tapestry comes with uh, mm, the service with different services for using, for example, here you can see we don't have to 
uh, configure anything. We have the built-in services for using the session. So we have the session service, which is so simply injected in uh, other service, in our services, in our page classes, and so on, and could be used. And it's just that simple. The only thing that we could do is have to do is to uh, configure the Hibernate uh, configuration, and that's it. Okay. Uh, the disadvantages. As I said, there wasn't a good backward compatibility between 4 and 5 version. Uh, also, um, maybe there is some lack of uh, documentation sometimes. I can say that they have some nice tutorials and something like a good, maybe partially good documentation. But uh, um, I think it's not so difficult for someone to learn how to use it in details just have to look for the appropriate books and so on, but they are such. Uh, okay, and now uh, I want to show you a brief demo. Let's see. Yeah. Just a second. Oops. So basically, simply it's really a simple one. Uh, just a second. Okay, I have a really simple uh, Java project here. Let me see, maybe there's some uh, validate. Okay, uh, so let's start at first the application. I'm using a JT container. Uh, here we can see in the console which services are being loaded. These services have different states again. But we can see all the services that are, using, that are used here. And let's see what we have. It's pretty uh, some, some basic page here. So what is nice is that I'll show you, you see, maybe you see, I think you see this date here. So I'll show you how I'll use the uh, live reloading feature. Uh, I'm going to the, so let's see first the, uh, structure, I have component, entities, pages, and services. So I have uh, index Java, and here in the resources, in the same level, I have index TML, which is the uh, template file. So basically, this date is uh, this one here. You can see it, uh, it's uh, being used uh, some sort of uh, uh, expression language here, but basically we have uh, this field here, so we just can change something. Let's go to the first date and refresh, and that's it. It works. Uh, let's go a little bit in more details here. So basically our uh, template consists of different uh, components. For example, the zone component is a, is a component that is uh, made for supporting Ajax. So we don't have to uh, use any kind of uh, JavaScript, uh, Ajax calls, and so on. We just surround our uh, some area with zone, and uh, we could address some of the links to refresh this zone. And that's all. It's really easy. Uh, and we don't have to refresh the whole page. There are also other uh, components here. We could have also uh, custom-made components. So I have one here. It's uh, my custom component. I also have another one. So you can see how easy it is to inject a component in a page. Here, this one with the ID, I mapped with the backend. This one is not mapped, so we just use it. But here, I can map this with a field in the uh, my uh, Java backend class. So basically, it's here. So with the ID, uh, which is corresponds to the name of the, to the variable here, we basically uh, map uh, both. So for example, when I submit, I can use it as an object, as an instance, and can uh, use some of its methods and so on. Uh, what is also interesting is that I could pass uh, parameters. Uh, to my component here, 
I can do it also in the in the Java class, but we can do it here. So basically, this is an entity, my entity. Let's see it. Uh, it's here. So my service is a service that I injected. I'll describe it just in a minute. So in the on activate state, so when the page comes in the activate state, uh, the on activate event handler is being called, and I'm initializing my property. So we have a couple of uh, specific uh, annotations. So I initialize here my property, and I pass it here to the component. So what happens in the component? I have, again, uh, Java and uh, template file. So here the component shows two messages, two, two, two fields. The first one is uh, my message, and here is uh, uh, the name uh, field of my parameter. So this is something interesting. For example, here, if uh, my parameter is null, I don't have to do any checks. It just will not be displayed. If I remove this and uh, it's null, I'll have an exception. So what happens here is that uh, I passed my parameter as named as entity. If I remove this name, it will be the parameter will be named my parameter. So here it will be not the entity, it will be my parameter. But for mm, to be more clear, uh, we could uh, we can override the uh, property field. And uh, the property uh, notation is something that we saw many times. Basically, uh, when we uh, mark some field as property, it can be used uh, in the uh, template file, as I said, like that. Also, if it's, no, uh, it's, it's, needed, it's enough also to not mark it as a property, but just to have uh, the appropriate getter. So it's uh, basically the same thing here. That's why I can use the my parameter just like that in the expression language. Uh, and uh, let's cover uh, the service, and I think we'll be finished. So basically, as I said, I injected here uh, my service, how I did it. Basically, my service is an interface that has only one. Uh, method, its implementation is here, so I return an entity with some field here, and everything that I should have is the app model here, and to bind the service and its implementation. After that, I can inject it and use it really simple. Uh, and I think that was most of uh, my presentation for today. We can see, uh, for example, here I have different links. Uh, this is this link is uh, re reloading the whole page. This is using Ajax, the zone thing. So they, they have this feature to mark it with some space with this yellow color. We can disable it, but it's just nice. Uh, as I said here, this Ivan comes from uh, this property that was marked with the uh, question mark. And the other one, there isn't because it's with the question mark. If I remove the question mark, I have an exception for this one because it tries to access the name field of a no uh, instance. And uh, that's it. We can see also a bigger application here I have uh, with uh, some additional uh, packages for mixings, for models. So we could have DAOs and so on, everything like. Uh, following the best patterns in the uh, all the uh, web frameworks, and I think that's it with the demo. Uh, maybe I'm not sure because the timer is not on, but I think maybe we have some time for questions, or we don't have. Yeah, go ahead. So have you compared Tapestry with uh, other uh, Java web frameworks like, for example, Google Web Toolkit, Vadin, Spring MVC, etc.? Mm -hmm. And if yes, why would you choose? What is the advantage uh, Tapestry provides over the other ones? OK. Uh, I don't think I have to repeat the question. Uh, so uh, I, I've used a lot of uh, frameworks like Spring, uh, GSF, and so on. I can say here, for me, except, ex uh, 
now uh, as, a, as a leader following uh, uh, leading a team, it's really important my team to be able to work fast and smoothly and my application to be scalable. So here, as uh, you saw, it's really uh, you, the developers are able to write code really fast. They don't have to configure anything. They do don't have to write uh, XMLs or something like that. In terms of performance, uh, as you saw here, uh, we don't use the HTTP session, which is being used in most of the uh, frameworks. For example, in Spring, if you have to store something per controller, you store it in the session. Uh, and I don't know, uh, I cannot say that this is the best one, but for example, if we have to be fast, if we have to, to give really good uh, quality in short time, it's a good choice. It's also, uh, there, there is also a good community uh, with uh, a good developer forum. You can send something. I personally have sent, have sent uh, a lot of questions and the answers are coming really fast, let's say in a, cup, in a day. So there is uh, support. Uh, of course, if we compare it with Spring, uh, uh, Tapestry does not have all the uh, additional modules of Spring and so on, but compared with the MVC, it's not, uh, it's pretty much the same, but uh, I can say you can write things much faster here. Another question? Okay, uh, when we don't have questions, then we can be finished, I hope. I gave you some good uh, impression about the core ideas in Tapestry. As I said, every one of you is a uh, skillful developer could go and uh, see how we can write specific things. Again, it's not the best solution, but it's really good in some cases. If you want to be fast, if our application is not so big, if, if it uh, should be clustered and so on, uh, it's a good one. It's for me, it's, the idea, the, it's really good that it's, it's modular and component-based. So as a, a flexible and agile team, we could uh, not me, uh, mess our work and so on. It's a good one, okay? Uh, yeah? Why, why you don't like it for big applications? Uh, I'll say Sorry, why. Sorry, I will repeat it. Why you don't like it for big applications? Uh, I say, I'll say why. Because sometimes when we have to, uh, maybe it's not uh, the right thing to say in big application, but maybe in complex web applications. Because uh, here everything is more like static. We have to describe, implement all our uh, components, and after that we, sh we can use them. But for example, we cannot create components dynamically because there is a lot of things that's being done behind the scenes and so on. And uh, to achieve this modularity and this stuff, uh, Tapestry asked, asked us for uh, writing everything uh, before that. So everything is more uh, static. And when I have to add some dynamic components, sometimes I have to, uh, I've been in this situation, I have to implement Mm, some kind of workarounds, let's say I'll use the loop uh, uh, component for writing dynamically uh, components and we'll change somehow the loop size. It's a bit uh, difficult for more complex UI stuff, okay? And as I said earlier, sometimes, uh, till now, it had a little bit uh, problems with uh, jQuery, for example, because it used prototype JS, which uses some of the same uh, annotations and some of the same, for example, the door sign. And to, if we wanted to use uh, jQuery, we had we did this, but it's not so uh, pleasant. We had to overwrite some. Uh, prototype GS stuff to use the jQuery appropriately. So may maybe this is something like an uh, answer. Okay, no, I th now I see I have more three minutes. It works. Uh, something, questions for three minutes or we'll go earlier. Okay, thank you very much. And again, it was a pleasure.